Welcome to a typical workday via virtual tour with Coral Restoration Foundation. We're on our boat, heading out to one of our coral nurseries and then to the reef, specifically the Carries Fort Nursery and nearby Carries Fort Reef. Now, we're just offshore of Upper Key Largo, which is part of the greater Florida coral reef system that stretches over 360 miles. It's a pretty beautiful day today with calm seas and clear water. As we go through this video, look up, look down, left, right, behind you. Just have fun and explore. We're all geared up, we've jumped in, and we're ready to go down. Are you? Just be sure to equalize your ears as we descend. All our nurseries are located in about 30 feet of depth out in the ocean. We don't have any facilities besides our warehouse and offices on land. At 30 feet of depth, the nurseries are located at two atmospheres of pressure. Every 30 feet is one atmosphere, and then there's another atmosphere pushing down on us from the surface. So it's important to equalize your ears when going down to do work. It's also important to have good buoyancy. As you can see, the nursery is all sand, which is really easy to kick up and ruin other divers' visibility. So we all use really careful finning techniques when swimming around. But this is an example of a coral nursery, a collection of PVC and fiberglass trees from which 60 corals are hung or otherwise attached to. We can lower or raise these trees if there's a hurricane coming or even from season to season to ensure our corals are staying healthy and comfortable. This particular nursery has over 100 trees right now. That's over 6,000 corals in this space. Now, I mentioned earlier, this is just one of our nurseries. We actually have seven located from Key West to this one in Carries Ford. But if you think 100 trees sounds like a lot, our biggest nursery has 500 trees and takes up over an acre and a half of space, which is just a little bigger than a football field. All in all, our seven nurseries produce over 45,000 corals to be reef ready every year. And we're planning to add more in the years to come. It's not all just one type of coral though. We just swam through the staghorn coral section and now we're in the elkhorn section. Staghorn and elkhorn were the two most predominant species on Florida reefs, so we focus on their restoration the most. Along with other stony corals, these are considered reef building species. In building their skeletons, they increase the structure and stability of a coral reef, hence the phrase reef building. This is important for coastal protection, habitat creation, and overall stabilization of the system. Branching corals like staghorn and elkhorn are designed to break in storms and reproduce asexually. Other corals may form mounding shapes which don't break as readily. The corals you see now are boulder corals, like the brain corals people often think of. Because they grow in a mounding shape like mountains, hanging in space just doesn't quite work for them. These unique tree structures encourage the corals to grow in their ideal morphologies. In total, we house 11 different species with a current focus on four that are returned to the reef year round. Thanks to these trees, our corals can grow much faster in a vertical space than in their natural reef environment. There's lots of reasons for this, but it boils down to getting more water flow. Since corals are animals that breathe, they're able to get more oxygen from the water flowing past them. They're also able to catch more food and get more sunlight to energize the symbiotic algae living in their tissue. The coral trees you see are considered the best way to quickly grow large quantities of certain coral species. Corals in the nurseries regularly spawn every summer, which is a good indicator of their general health. Because our coral nurseries are so large and healthy, they act as a living laboratory. This means that CRF can host groups from around the world in diverse backgrounds, such as for the once a year coral spawning events in which we recently hosted a group to cryogenically preserve coral sperm. To bring corals to the reef, we need to harvest them, which is done by either cutting pieces off like you see here or cutting entire colonies down. We have to be careful to cut the right number, which is harder than it sounds. Counting on land is easy, but underwater, not so much. You can also see that here at CRF, we use highly technical and advanced materials like toilet brushes, handheld cutters, and milk crates. We joke about this, but these cost-effective materials mean that our methods are transferable to pretty much anywhere in the world. Once counted and collected, we place the corals in crates for transport and swim the coral crates back to the boat. 
The corals aren't the only tenants in the nursery. We invited a local nonprofit to survey our nurseries and they found that the coral nurseries are more biodiverse than many of the surrounding reefs. This includes little critters like conch and sea stars, but also the more unexpected hammerhead shark and eagle ray. Once these corals are removed from the nursery, they're going to their new reef home. All the corals we bring with us must go to the reef. There's no bringing back extras if we can't finish them all. This means that our work plan has to be calculated carefully and daily goals met regardless of circumstances. We're heading back to the boat now, so be sure to equalize your ears again. Once on the surface, we'll hand the corals up to colleagues on the boat, where the corals will either be transported in tubs of water long distance or dry for short distances. We know from experience that the corals are fine out of the water for about an hour. They just layer up with a slimy coating as protection and they're good to go. That's only done if we know we have a short ride to the reef though. Sometimes the corals do a sleepover on land at our warehouse in anticipation of being driven elsewhere the next day. And sometimes we get hitchhikers and stowaways. Just the other day, a pygmy octopus was hiding in one of the corals. Okay, we're gonna head to the reef now. See you there. Here we are at the corals new home, Carrie's Fort Reef. While we're waiting to jump off the boat and get our corals, let's review why coral reefs are so important. Coral reefs are worth nearly $10 trillion globally every year, value that comes from tourism, fishing, and coastal protection. But the world has lost nearly 50% of its coral reefs in the last 30 years. And Florida's coral reefs currently only have about 1% to 2% of its historical hard coral habitat left. CRF's goal is to return the reefs of the Florida Keys to a functional level and to stabilize reefs so that they can jumpstart themselves to health. We do this by gluing the harvested corals to various reefs throughout the Keys, including Carey's Fort Reef. This is why having different species is so important. Just as a healthy forest needs grasses and weeds to hold dirt in place, but also needs big strong redwoods to absorb the energy from passing storms, a coral reef is similar. It needs the biodiversity of coral species to stay strong and healthy and to provide habitat for all the critters big and small. So that's why we grow and outplant so many different species. As we swim around, you can see the groupings of staghorn coral that we call clusters. Every cluster is identified by a bright yellow cow tag that lists the coral's genetic type. Each cluster is what we call monogenetic. There's only one genetic variant per cluster. And there are many different clusters of different genetic variants in every restoration work area. In this way, we hope that when corals spawn, new genetic recombinations may occur naturally. While corals that would never have otherwise spawned near each other are now grouped together, we randomly place the different genotypes on reefs so as to maximize genetic diversity represented in the restoration area. While corals that would never have otherwise spawned near each other are now grouped together, we randomly place the different genotypes on reefs so as to maximize genetic diversity represented in the restoration area. At this point, you can see and hear our team hard at work. Now, I know that you've probably been told not to touch coral and not to touch the reef, and you're wondering why we're using hammers on the reef. The glue we use is a marine epoxy that will only stick to clean rock. Remember, the reef that you see was built over thousands of years by coral laying down thin layers of skeleton, and that's what makes the structure you see. Over time, algae grew over this reef structure, so we use the hammers to clean a space on which the epoxy will stick. Are you ready for our secret outplanting recipe? Step one is to clean the points of attachment to which the coral will be glued. Step two, measure back and forth to ensure you place the epoxy accurately. Step three, gently nestle the coral into the epoxy. And step four, this is highly scientific, check your work by waving water at the coral to ensure it stays put. If it wibble wobbles, you're going to do it over again. If it flat out rolls away, then you guessed it, you're going to go get the coral and then you're going to do it over again. If that sounds simple enough, then let's dig into the details. 
you can see that the soft corals are moving oh so gently back and forth. We call this surge. If the surge is too strong, it's practically impossible to do restoration work or dive safely. It's not great restoration or dive practice if both humans and corals are rolling across the reef. There's also lots of critters that are interested in what we're doing. Sometimes we see them and sometimes we don't. Using a GoPro to capture some everyday footage, we accidentally caught a nurse shark swimming right through and past a team of outplanters last summer and not a single diver saw it. We never know it's going to swim by. Here are the boulder corals being outplanted. We try to place the boulder corals in a similar cluster fashion as the staghorn you saw earlier. By using this cluster method of grouping corals, it encourages something called fusion. When corals are the same species and genetically similar enough, multiple smaller colonies will fuse into one bigger colony. By grouping corals together and encouraging them to fuse, we can cover more surface area than by trying to place one big coral that may be more susceptible to being knocked loose by waves. While the staghorn coral gets placed on general reef substrate, we try to place the boulder corals on dead boulder coral skeletons. You can see such a skeleton here with the smaller living new fragments of boulder corals being epoxied onto it. This method means more clearing and hammering though, which gets really tiring. It also means that we have to work carefully. It's easy to get tunnel vision when working and forget to check how much air we have left. We have to be careful when working underwater and always be aware of our buddies, the corals, and ourselves. Nearly all the elkhorn and staghorn corals found on Carey's Fort are corals that Coral Restoration Foundation has placed over the years. It's doing so well that we consider it our signature reef and we are well on our way to returning 30,000 corals total to the wild here alone which sounds like a lot. But here at CRF, that's just one of many, many milestones. We'll be at Carey's Fort Reef and other reefs in the Florida Keys for many years to come. We know that our reefs aren't going to look like they did 100 years ago. So we have to be realistic in that the focus of restoration work isn't on restoring any particular species, but on the functionality of an ecosystem. The goal is to stabilize the reef in the face of local stressors like water pollution, but also in anticipation of climate change. We expect in the next 80 years that all coral reefs may go extinct. Nearly 25% of all marine species, from lobsters and tuna to turtles to sharks and dolphins, rely on coral reefs and 70% of our oxygen comes from our healthy oceans. What will our world look like or be like without coral reefs? Personally, I don't really want to find out. Here at Carey's Fort Reef and other active restoration sites, we see signs of hope that the reefs can recover. Thank you so much for joining us on this tour today. We really hope that you'll join us again in the future, virtually or in person. Happy Coral Palooza!